Hello traders, uh, the title of this video is uh, Stochastic Patterns Trader explains how he will exit the trade. All right? So a Stochastic Pattern Trader did ask me a question uh, to explain more how to exit the trade. All right? Now one of the reasons why I do not uh, uh, advise traders how they should exit the train is because of uh, the risk tolerance, right? So how one trader is exiting the train is completely different from how another trader is will be exiting the train. So it's a personal matter relating to the risk tolerance. However, there are general rules that we can follow simple rules that we should follow when we want to exit the trade. So for that gentleman, because uh, he knows about the top-down trading method, is that when we are trading, we are using a different time frame trading method. We should use the signal time frame to decide, okay, when we should exit the trade because the signal is fired on the signal time frame. We must use the signal time frame it, again that's why this this is it another trader may say joe why can't we use the setup time frame yes we can use the setup time frame also if you want to exit the trade but generally all right if you are teaching somebody to exit the trade you will recommend to that person to use the signal time frame but we can use the setup time frame if you, are, if you are more experienced trader, you will use the set and frame. All right? So here we have a stochastic pattern. It's not a gorgeous one. You can see stochastic was overbought, well, well overbought in the 90. Display a, a low, and then it goes down to the overshow zone. It became very overshow here. All right? This is a distinctive uh, stochastic pattern. All right? Now. So the first thing that we will pay attention to is the market pattern. So the market pattern was bearish here, it was bearish before. At the time when we see this stochastic, we saw this stochastic pattern, the prior was retesting the channel. It's a nice timing point. Everything aligned carefully. The bullish momentum is increasing. The bearish momentum was diminishing. The prior breaks above the channel, talking about the market pattern, now is retesting the top of the channel at the time when the stochastic pattern is being formed. We must now use a top-down trading method to enter the trade. Now suppose you are here and you enter the trade and the price start going up. All right, so it start going up, you start thinking, John, well, you told me how to enter the trade at a support level on the edge at a hot spot trading zone, you see on the edge of this trend line nicely also which is the intersection point between the top of the channel is a good play. This is what we call hot spot trading zone. Now my trade is working beautifully. I'm a swing trader. Tell me how do I exit the trade? That was the question. So the general rule is simple. All right? So if you enter the trade here, all right, and you want to exit the trade, your first target is the first and nearest resistance level. So trade I've been following before know that I talk about this, but because I've been asked that question again, that's why I'm going over it one more time. By here, where is the first and nearest resistance level? Especially on the signal time frame. If you are day trading, you can use your entry time frame for your exit. So on your entry time frame, you may say, where is the first and nearest resistance level? It can be no more horizontal resistance level. It can be a trend line. It can be a Fibonacci extension. All right now we see. That's why you become a little bit. Uh, okay. It can be a price target. Generally, we pay attention to the horizontal key uh, support and resistance level, and also to the trend line. Apart from those uh, key levels, we will also. Pay attention to the price target level. So generally, a trader will buy here and will ask and will say the price does not go up for no reason. It's always headed to a specific target level. So here, 
it's a bit messy. Can we call this a head and shoulder chart pattern? Can we call this the hand? Can we call this the, the right hand side shoulder? Can we call this the left hand side shoulder? I wind up a bit, pull blah 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 blah, but that's not how the head and shoulder chart pattern form. I'm just asking a question to help you to show you one example or two, all right? Because the head and shoulder chart pattern usually form at the end of a downtrend. So here, going down, 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 down. We see this low, followed by this deeper low, followed by higher low. Here we have a head and the shoulder chart pattern here. A price still in the channel. That's why you see here, still in the channel. You pull back again, and I see here that's what I'm talking about head and shoulder chart pattern here. So, if you want to talk about a price target level, you use the depth. Of the head, and you project it above the neckline. So the neckline is there. The top here is the neckline here. So for swing trader, you will be paying attention more to the price target level. Then you will project it. Oops, I'm moving another line. You see? Hold on, please. This is my main. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. I think there are some malware on my computer now. I need to remove. put it on the top of the neckline like this. And this will be your ultimate target here. And you will divide that target into two because there are always two target levels the ultimate target right there and the midpoint target. So you divide the measuring stick into two. There is a midpoint target there. All right. You see, that's where the price did stop here, somewhere here, you see, in this zone. Because there is the midpoint target here. Those who bought it here, the swing traders, prior reaches the midpoint target level. All right. That's why they came out here. So all in all, very simple. I don't want to make a long story. We buy at one support level. The question is, where is the first and nearest resistance level? There's no magic about it. That's how you will exit the trade. As I said at the beginning, it's difficult to recommend to trade how they exit the trade because it's depending on your own risk tolerance. But the bottom line is that we look for First and nearer resistance level, you may secure your gain, which means you move your stop loss up to secure your profit at that point in time, which you don't want to exit the trend. Or you may decide to take your profit as the price hit that first and nearer resistance level, and you will wait again for the price to retake that, uh, to break above and retake that resistance level, and then you will buy again. Sometime trader will open two positions at the beginning. And as the price hits the first and nearer resistance level, they will close the first trade and let the other one run. But there is a risk to that because if you have two trades, you are multiplying the risk. But if you work beautifully, you are multiplying also the reward. So both sides. Pan determinism. <laughs> Not self determinism, but pan determinism. All right? So. First target level, first resistance ahead. If you are selling the same thing, you sell here. Where is the first and nearest support level? That will be your first target level, especially on the signal time frame. And we can use the setup time frame and also the entry time frame. Especially if you are scalping, you're not going to look for your uh, uh, exit level. On the signal time frame, you will use on your entry time frame because you are scrapping, all right? All right? The first and the other. So the resistance can be no more resistance that we see on the chart like this. It can be also a trend line. It can be also the edge of the pitchfork tool. So if you don't know how to use pitchfork tool, go to www.dayportrader.com. So you apply the pitchfork tool to the prior one, two, three. It can be the edge of the pitchfork tool. It can be also all right, a projection of a channel. So price is first. So those one using the price, the channel, the projection of the channel, 
or the market geometry. All right? It's another way to set a profit target. All right? So, prior consolidation on a horizontal channel, you base the ball, you measure the width of that channel, and you project it on top of the channel. I don't want to talk about market geometry because other traders already know about it. If you want to know more, just YouTube search the playlist about market geometry by day pro trader, day pro trader, YouTube channel, and you'll be busy. So market geometry, the projection of any channel, either the horizontal, so the price in a rising channel is come out of the rising channel below it. You project it in a directional price. You measure the width of that channel and you project it in a directional price. If it goes above it, you project it in a direction of the price above it, the width of the original channel. All right. Like here now, hope I this software will allow me to draw on it because uh, all kind of blah 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 going on now on my computer. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> there's no point to hack into this computer, guys. <laughs> Not in here. <laughs> all right, so you see that channel that goes above it. We measure the width, we project it up, and then we draw a line that is parallel to that channel. So you'll be drawing a line here. All right. So key support and resistance level, resistance level, probably going now. Watch the resistance ahead. So draw all the resistance ahead. So those are the places where you are ready to exit the trade. Because why? It's a market stable data. The price is always going from one support level to the next resistance level or to a specific target level. All right. So I talk about those topic at uh, two for stock trader YouTube channel. Price does not go up for no reason. Price target level. How do you set target? I talk about all those things at uh, two for stock trader YouTube channel. So key level and price target level will allow you to exit the trade correctly. Sometime, my friend. That's why uh, when you want to talk about how to set profit, it's a wide topic. A wide range okay topic it's just depending on the risk tolerance of a trader a trader may open a trade and say because of the time of the day because of the okay the characteristic of the financial instrument that i'm trading if the price hit 50 pip i'm taking my profit it's just a decision how much profit do you want to take out of that trade that's the bottom line Okay, if or, or the first target that you may set is that how much are you risking? So if you are risking 15 pips to exit the trend, when a price reaches 15 pips, well, you know that uh, it's time to start uh, doing something, all right? Or it goes above 50 pips. So your target, you, 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 you are, so setting profit has something to do about, okay, setting stop loss. It's true. Isn't it? So if you are risking 30 pips, all right, what will be your reasonable reward? Minimum 30 pips. Yes or no? Minimum 30 pips. Will the trade allow you to get 30 pips out of it? If the answer is no, well, it's a speculative trade. Then you have to keep your eyes on it and fire like a donkey if they try to take your money because you are you know that you are taking a higher risk. But if you know that a price can achieve that 30 pips that you are risking. And the prior move 40 pips instead of admiring how competent you are you can move your stop loss 20 pips at least so you secure at least 20 pips now you are risking only 10 pips so talking about how to exit the trade you are risking 30 pips if the prior move 30 pips you have a right to close that trade and grab that 30 pips because you are risking 30 pips you get 30 pips you take 30 pips you are the winner they didn't take your money, you take their money. Yes or no? Or prior you are risking 15 pips, prior move up 25 pips, you may decide to just close the trade. So say, exit in a trade sometimes is not about stop or it's not about the support, resistance, or profit target. It may just be a decision that you made in accordance to the risk that you are taking or the market environment at that point in time. So you are taking a trade. In the last hour of the market, are you going to see the expecting 100 pips? If it's, it can have it, it happens sometimes. But if you get 50 pips, the market got 30 minutes left, you may secure some of those gains.
be ready to, to grab your profit or you don't allow anybody to take your money as the market is about to close or you do not allow your winning trade to turn into a losing trade. Am I talking too much? So those are the things that we take into consideration all right, when we are talking about exiting the trade. So I'm not going to make it a long story today. <laughs> all right. So first support. Okay, if you are buying your first exit level, it's the first and year register level. So you will draw, you see how I have all this line here. So you are going from one support to one resistance. You see, you see here, you went for the orange line, went to the pink one, you break the bull, retest. So you may decide to close it or secure your gain and let it run. Continue next resistance level. This one, 7694. You see? That's how the price doing. The price, you see how the price acknowledging every key level. And move up again, next level. This one got a tail, all right? If it pierce through it, why is the next one? See, so from here we have a resistance, 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 resistance. So that's how we exit the trade, generally. The next thing we do, we use market geometry. Projection of channel, any channel, any channel. We can project even a triangle to set a target. Right, the projection of the target, the, the projection of a channel, allow us to set a profit target and to know where to exit the trade. So when you project a channel, there's always a midpoint target. So you project this channel now in the initial price. There will be median line of your new projected channel. That's the midpoint target. Another way to exit the trade is to use a target level. How do you set a profit target for a head and shoulder chart pattern? You measure the, the height of the head. And you project it below the neckline. How do you set a target for the head and shoulder? An uh, inverted head and shoulder chart pattern. You measure the, the depth of the head and you project it above the neckline. All right. How do you set a target for a triangle? You project okay, the height of the triangle, depending on which triangle you are using. All right. And so on. How do you set a target for uh, A, B, C, D, E? Uh, a triangle and so on. How do you set a target for A, B, C, D, a chart pattern and so on? Okay, so price goes up. Very simple way to, to set a target in an upper. So if price goes up, well, I'm looking for a very nice example. Uh, right, so price goes up from here to here, pull back. All right, you measure this distance from here to here. Well, it pull back. It's an invitation to buy. So if you brace above this high, we put this measure stick from here. To here, that's the first move. All right, so pull back. We will expect it to go up to that point. But when you do that, you have to have a midpoint target. So you measure the distance from here to here. You project it from here up if the price breaks above it, and you have a midpoint target and the ultimate target. You do the same thing in a downtrend. All right, looking for a nice clean example. Go down, pull up a bit, rally up. So you measure this distance from here to here. And as this trail is broken, start going down, you use that measure stick, project it down. A, B, C, D chart pattern. You highlight the midpoint target, be ready to secure your gain or take profit at the midpoint. Try may change direction at the midpoint target level or may continue and go all the way to the ultimate target level. Use the market geometry. Projection of angles also allow us to set a target angle between two trend lines. Go out and project it up. So here we have a wider angle between the two black trend lines here. So we can measure that. All right, this is what I'm saying. I don't want to move my line, I'm moving. We can measure that angle and project it above if the prior one day breaks above this. Uh, okay to this trailer here, and so on, and so on. So all in all, we see a stochastic pattern on the weekly chart, like we see here, all right? Or everything that I've discussed, all right, we can apply it when we switch to the signal time frame. Here, the weekly chart, the signal time frame, either two hour time frame or four hour time frame. So the four hour time frame, we implement what we have discussed now. For somebody who is position trader or swing trader, they may use the setup time frame to set their targets. Resistance ahead, as everything that we have discussed, we can use pitchfork tool, market geometry, projection of channels, 
price target, price does not go up or down for no reason. It's always headed to a specific target level. The V pattern, all right? The inverted V pattern, okay? Or all the chart pattern that you can imagine, how do you set a target, all right? But most importantly, generally, use key resistance ahead, use key support level below when the price is going down, plus the market geometry at a normal target level. That's how we let's see the trade. But the bottom line is it, it all depends on you. How much profit are you expecting out of the trade? How much are you risking? Make a decision. How is the market environment? Make a decision. Your target may be somewhere up there, but the market environment or the market, okay, may be volatile, and then you will decide to close that trade and not having anything to do with it. Or it's Friday, or it's the first week of the month, you don't want to hang around too much, you just close those trades, or you have too many trades open, they're all working beautifully, but you say, whoa, 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 there's this news coming, I'm not going to hang around smiling, just close some of them and reduce the risk. So this is all about, okay, how you exit the trade. Now, one more thing. How you exit the trade depends on how you feel. That's the, the correct answer. How do you feel when you are looking at that trade? Generally, you will follow. The instinct will be not to lose. Anytime you resist exiting a trade because of a greed, be very careful. At least secure your gain. Have some defensive measures in place. Whenever it is a greed that is uh, pushing you not to exit the train, have defensive measures in place. But when we want to exit the train, how do we feel? We don't want to lose, or we don't want to lose big, or we want to reduce the risk. That's the urge. So price going down, the price heading to the next resistance level. If it's still bullish, you break above it. Breaks the ball, the next one, and continue to go up breaking resistance. In a downtrend, continue to break support level until the momentum, okay, is completely weak. All right. The market pattern is it horizontal, is it rising, is it declining. Project the channel once the price breaks the ball, it's what we call the rotation of market patterns. So the stochastic pattern gives us the setup, okay, all right, like here, on the edge. Now we buy using the top down trade method. How much profit will you be happy with? That's the question. And you want to bank those profit consistently. That's what you want to do. So I hope I have money to answer your question. You have any more questions, all right, let me know about how to exit the train or you have a specific scenario that you want me to look at okay please do not hesitate okay uh, to contact we are recording this video today because a stochastic pattern trader did say to me joe you talk about uh, okay entering the train making sure it's at the support level if you want to buy making sure it's at the resistance level when you want to sell uh, you didn't say anything about how to exit the train the reason was that uh, it's a wide range uh, topic uh, it's more personal, so I leave it to trader to decide how to exit the trade. And now that they ask me, now recording this video, to tell you my viewpoint, talking about how to exit the trade, generally speaking. So this will conclude our discussion today about the stochastic pattern trader explains how he will exit the trade. Until the next time, enjoy yourself and be very happy. We are the two for SP trading material traders talking about stochastic pattern trader. Explain how he will exit the trade. Happy trading to you all, and I will speak to you soon. Thank you for watching.